Hey everybody. Let's say you have a nice high definition TV that is a rear projection TV and uses DLP technology to put the picture on the screen. Let's say you bought this TV in about 2008 or at least um, four years before the date of watching this video. And let's say all of a sudden you start seeing what I refer to as stars and fleas on your display. And originally start out as a couple or just one or two little dots and then they just multiplied very fast. You've probably been wondering what the problem is. Well here's a, what the problem is right here. It's your DLP chip. I'm sure um, in many commercials and things you've heard about DLP chips. It's a chip that has millions and millions of little bitty mirrors that put a picture on your screen. Well basically these chips, like I said, they have so many little bitty tiny mirrors that actually have a function. They turn on or off. And when they're on, of course you see a white dot on your screen. When they're off you see a black dot. Over time, which is not, this isn't very common, but over time sometimes the DLP chip can fail. The little bitty mirrors will get stuck and um, this right here this shiny part is actually the part of the chip that has the little bitty mirrors and this is actually the part that shows up everything on your screen let's go have a little look at this chip at the front and back side this is the bad DLP chip out of our Mitsubishi Electric WD-57734 1080p high definition rear projection TV I just replaced this chip today. You know, on the back side of this chip actually makes contact with a heat sink. And these are the little bitty pins. Folks, if you are familiar with computers and technology, you'll say, hey, this looks really familiar to CPU designs. Computer processors have little bitty pins on the bottom of them, and they have to be cooled. Because they have, you know, millions of tiny little transistors in them that serve a function as zeros and ones and those things can get pretty hot the same goes for these DLP chips but anyways um let's say you start seeing dots and stuff on your screen you can actually see them in the DLP chip too now let me go ahead and try to get this aim just right to where you can actually see those little bitty dots okay here's a look at those little bitty dots I'll flip this around. And this is exactly how they looked on the TV screen. All sorts of little bitty dots. And here is a screenshot of the TV display. Notice how close similar these dots are. Every little dot you see here is a failed mirror. And I believe we're only seeing half the failed mirrors because there are many black ones. Notice the term I used, stars and fleas. Fleas represented the um, mirrors that were stuck off and shown a black dot. These are all white dots. So now you're wondering, okay, where should I go from here? How much is it going to cost? That's your biggest question. Well, um, for this particular TV, the Mitsubishi WD-57734, you have to do some looking around because there are many sites that want to actually, actually charge about 30 to 40 extra dollars on top of the price of the chip. I found the chip at the cheapest amount on Amazon, and, I, and that was around $160 with free shipping. I think it was free shipping anyway, but um, it was on Amazon. If you look around, you might actually find it cheaper. Okay, now you're probably asking, um, okay, this chip is $160. Will Mitsubishi or whoever actually cover this? The sad thing is, is, in many cases, no, they will not honor any repairs. I've actually heard some times where Samsung actually honored some warranty repairs. They, they warranted the cut, um, cost of the part, but you still had to pay for service. And, um... This problem doesn't occur with just Mitsubishi. 
it occurs with Samsung and a few others too. Now I just created a video on replacing this DLP chip. And in that YouTube video, I'll also add to the description box below the video some links to some sites to help you with doing this fix. It's not that hard if you're actually um, used to fixing computers because it's close to similar. But if you're not really familiar with electronics and technology, you might want to take it to somebody or just really study over the procedures and you can probably do it yourself just fine. And you're probably wondering, okay, what is causing this to happen? DLP chips don't fail extremely often, though it is a known issue with some TVs. When I replaced this DLP chip in the Mitsubishi TV, oh, there's a good look at those dots. When I replace that, um, replace this chip, I noticed right away, everything is very dirty. The back of the TV has a fan over the, um, light engine where this DLP chip is located and there's a heat sink attached to the back of this pretty good size heat sink at that and the problem was there was so much dust getting clogged up inside the fan and heat sink the fan still would have spin just fine and air could somewhat get through but it was very restricted due to all the buildup of dust and of course we're talking about a four year old TV and obviously the TV was never cleaned out so if you have a DLP TV it's recommended that at least once a year, maybe, yeah, hopefully at least once a year, do some regular maintenance, pop the cover off, and clean those fans out. That'll help things a lot. But here's the next problem I noticed. This gray stuff is thermal interface material. It's like a very cheap thermal paste. And you notice, it looks very clean on this. Well, see, normally you think, okay, it's clean, that's good, but actually, in this case, no, it's not. It's because the thermal paste didn't really do its job. It just sat there between heat sink and chip and didn't really do the job of transferring the heat. If it properly bonded to this metal and to the metal of the heat sink, it would have been a very big mess when I pulled this off. I would have had to really clean it up and everything, at least that way with the heat sink. I was able to just scratch this stuff off. And just look, I can just scratch it right off of here. See, there, there it is on my fingernail. That's not good thermal compound or thermal interface material in my opinion. So, I believe this chip here overheated quite a bit and helped cause it to fail over its time of operation. Of course, computer CPUs, or at least in the old days, if they weren't properly cooled, they would just burn up and you'd be out a probably $200 CPU. Nowadays, computer processors will shut off automatically if they overheat. But with the case of DLP chips, I do not think they will shut off if they are getting too hot. They just burn up. And I think this here is what happens when the DLP chip burns out. All these little bitty mirrors fail, resulting in all the little stars and fleas on your TV display. So anyways, um... You're probably thinking, hey, I should avoid all DLP products in the future. Well, here's the truth, at least what I think with DLP um, TV sets and everything else. This technology works very well. And when it's properly maintained or properly assembled, I think this problem here could have been uh, um, averted. It wouldn't have never happened if, it was, if the TV was properly assembled and everything, at least with the um, cooling for this chip. DLP works very very well it gives you a very good picture of course I'm a PC technician and I've done some on-site repairs and I've seen some high-definition LCD displays and to be honest with you I've seen 1080p on let's see LCD displays and it didn't look as good as the 1080 resolution on this Mitsubishi TV the picture quality seemed a whole lot better because of this technology so um, it's definitely a nice technology it's something that shouldn't be completely avoided just because of these chip failures once in a while normally in DLP TV sets the lamps fail and sometimes the color wheels fail it's mainly just the lamps in the older sets newer DLP sets commonly have LEDs for 
lighting and pretty much LEDs will run for probably 40 to 60 years if not more. Sometimes if they're cheap they'll fail early but other than that you really don't have to worry about LEDs failing. But these older, lamp, older, these older DLP sets have halogen or mercury based lamps in them and those do fail over time and have to be replaced. So anyways, I'm, I hope this information was helpful for you. Here's another good look at this DLP chip. It looks a lot like a laptop processor and the way it installs is about the same as installing a laptop CPU. This chip is about two inches long by I'd say maybe an inch and a half wide. And like I say, this right here is the actual part that does the work of creating the picture you see on your screen. And the new DLP chip had none of these little spots in it. It was perfectly clear. And the picture on the TV at night looks absolutely wonderful after I replace this chip. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them. Thanks for watching.